Hi YouTube, some of you might have seen my first video that I did where I did this armadillo sculpt. So I've made this out of milliput um, mainly. I mean it's got a wire frame inside it like an armature and then milliput on the outside. Um, milliput is like a putty that hardens at room temperature. It takes about four hours to set. Um, so this ended up taking me much longer than I thought it would. Um, each row of scales on his shell, for example, took four hours, so you can add all that up. It did end up taking a very long time. Um, but I was trying to pack in as much detail as I could into this um, and trying to make it look as realistic as possible. The scale patterns are quite complicated and it, it did take me quite a few kind of um, attempts to get it right. Um, and you can see here, like I've pushed into the milliput so you've got lots of kind of texture and things um, but anyway check out the first video if you want to see more about how I made this this video is going to be about me painting this to make it look realistic um, my original plan was to keep it like this in milliput and have it cast in bronze um, but I think that's going to cost me quite a lot of money and I really wanted to kind of paint it and see what it looks like all sort of realistic looking yeah, I made this so you could either stand him up like this on his end, um, or you can kind of lay him on his side, which looks quite cute. Um, or you can also lay him on his back, like the shell has got a bit of a dip in the back, so you can position him um, like this. Okay, I'll show you the painting stages of this now. I've done it as a time lapse because it ended up taking me quite a few hours, um, so this is just the best way to show you, I think. Right, I started by mixing a very dark brown colour. So I used really dark green with red mixed together. That gave me this really dark brown. And what I've done is I've added quite a lot of water to this to make it into more of what's called a wash. And what this does is it gets the paint into like every single little kind of crack and crevice and you know little any little pits and things it gets the paint right into those and that is really important if you were to make the paint really quite thick like straight from the tube or something like that um, it would be too thick and what would happen is that paint would go into all of your uh, details that you've done with the sculpt that have taken you so long to do and the paint would yeah literally fill those cracks up and then when you come to do dry brushing later on it wouldn't show up as much of the detail. So you just need this dark colour to get right down into all those little grooves and things. And it wouldn't matter at this point, like if you rub some of the top surface off. Um, if some of the paint came off it, it wouldn't matter because you're going to be dry brushing lighter colours onto the top parts anyway. This has just got to be for all of those little in-between kind of gaps and things. Um, so you can see that on a time lapse it didn't look like it took very long but that took quite quite a while to do okay so now I'm mixing a grey colour this is black and white with a tiny bit of yellow ochre added to it and this is for all his kind of skin so on his belly he's got all these kind of like skin textures um, and they also go sort of under his arms and his legs and then obviously he's got scales on the tops of his arms and legs, so I'm not going to do those. This is just for the kind of skin areas. So I do like his kind of chin um, and the back of his neck as well. And also his ears. Um, and then what I'll do with... This is all dry brush, by the way. So what I'm doing is dabbing each time on that bit of kitchen paper and just trying to get rid of as much paint as possible. Right, now I mix just a lighter grey. So just the same but with uh, more white added to it. And again, this is dry brush. So you're just um, dragging this over the texture that you've done for any kind of belly wrinkles and that kind of thing. And it just picks up those kind of high points of the wrinkles. And it makes the, the texture really kind of stand out. Okay, then I started uh, dry brushing the shell. So I'm just using yellow ochre here. And the paint was straight from the tube and again then I rub it on the kitchen paper to get it really you know the brush as dry as possible and hardly any paint at all literally hardly need any and then I'm just dragging this across to bring out all the kind of highlights on each scoot of his shell and it does take a lot of building up and quite a lot of you know rubbing backwards and forwards on the kitchen paper but it um 
it makes quite a difference to the look of the shell like every single scoot of his shell now looks like it's got kind of a highlight area you know where the light's kind of catching it and I know it's hard to see in this video really but it it will get kind of um, more obvious as I go and use brighter and brighter colors so I'm doing the same thing here on his head you can see then look, all of the the gaps still remain that sort of dark brown color and all of the you know every kind of detail that I put in with the sculpt is now showing up more so that's what I really like about this is you go to all the effort of making you know all these little scales and you know pressing into to form all the kind of scales on his head and the scales on his shell and and then when you dry brush it kind of highlights them all so they all show up more okay at this point I did feel that some of the gaps in his shell were looking a bit too dark um, and I wanted to kind of lighten them a little bit but not too much so what I did was I took some of the yellow ochre color again and I just added loads of water to it so again making it into a wash rather than dry brushing it on it's now going on really wet and because it's so wet it gets down into all of those little gaps again and so what it's doing is it's basically just lightening the, the dark brown just a little bit um, which kind of ties it in more with the yellow ochre highlights that I put on. Right now I'm adding a much paler yellow ochre colour to the scales. What's really nice about this is you can always kind of go work backwards and forwards with this. You know, if you put on a, a dry brush um, colour like this and you do it too kind of bright, you can always then go back, you know, darken the colour again and just go back over it um, to darken it a bit. So you're not you know it's not a great amount of panic involved if you put something on and you you feel it's too bright just knock it back a bit with a darker color so i know like it ends up taking longer but the main thing is just to get the end result looking perfect okay this is me painting the claws so i'm using like a pinkish gray color for this and you can see i've switched brushes so i'm using a much smaller brush and I'm just painting them like a flat color to start with um, and you can see because it's a lighter color this makes the claws kind of stand out quite a bit more I will come back to these later and add highlights to them um, and you'll see that later in the video um, and I'm also going to paint his um, belly again so this is using pale gray like even paler than before so lots more white added and you don't have to go over the whole of the belly you know what what I do when I get to the brightest sort of colors I'm just doing it on like the highest areas so like the the high points where you think the lights gonna hit it the most um, and now I'm just painting the eyes so this is just jet black and that makes the eyes kind of really stand out and what I'll do later is I'll add some PVA glue to anything that I want to look shiny. So I'll add that to his eyes because I want them to have a kind of a sparkle of life, have like a highlight in the eyes. Uh, and then I'll also paint PVA glue like on his claws, on his nose, which I'm painting now at, at this stage. Um, and then I'll, I'll also paint like his um, shell. Right, now I'm putting on the fur this was just from an old dog toy um, so the first bit of fur that I put on I realized I'd done them too long so I've started again and you can see I just put PVA glue down the sides in between kind of his shell and his body and then I'm just putting in these tufts of fur one at a time and pushing them in um, with the tip of a paintbrush and that just kind of sets them in place and then the PVA glue takes quite a long time to dry but when it does dry the um, the fur is nice and firmly stuck in there um, now I know like this fur is too white so if you've seen my other video like I did a video on a gremlin that I made and I used this exact same fur to do his sort of Mohican on the gremlin and what I ended up doing was airbrushing um, the base of the fur um, just to darken it and it sort of softened it in to the um, to the gremlin so check out that video if you haven't seen it already that ended up taking me a long time because it's a life-size gremlin but um, 
yeah, with this one, the fur is too white. Like, you know, armadillos do have white fur, but because they are walking in soil and stuff all the time, it tends to kind of, um, you know, go a bit brownish or a bit yellowish. So I will airbrush some of this fur in a bit as well to make it more realistic. This is just me getting all the main tufts in to start with. And what I've noticed is they have these kind of main tufts as well that kind of poke out from underneath their chin and uh, on either side and that looks quite cute. Uh, I obviously wanted to make this look kind of as cute as possible. So, okay, I'm going to hair dryer this bit. Sorry, I couldn't resist putting that little clip of me hair drying his fur in there because uh, it was blowing all over the place and it was quite cute. Right, this is me just adding a bit more fur. Now I've got the airbrush out and I've mixed up a yellow ochre sort of colour and again I'm, I'm just airbrushing this just to kind of stain the fur um, so it looks a bit more realistic. It was a bit too white before, it didn't really tie in with the armadillo at all. And this is me just positioning the fur so it looks much more like it does on a real armadillo. Um, and I think that really helps. Okay, so this was basically it finished. But I just needed to add a few more highlights at this point. So you can see here, this is it finished. So what I've done is I've done more highlights to the claws. Um, just with a really pale grey colour. And I've also gone in and I've glazed a lot of the shell, a lot of the scales, his eyes, you can see the eyes have got a nice sparkle to them now. So anything that's the grey skin remains quite matte, but anything that's like a shell or you know a scale is all nice and shiny. So that looks much more like the real thing now. Um, so I was really pleased with how this turned out. I wasn't sure you know whether I should paint it or not or whether I should have just left it as milliput and you know in the hopes that one day I might get it cast in bronze obviously now I can't get it cast in bronze because it's it's a one-off kind of model I am making a nine banded armadillo as well at the moment and I'll do more videos on that as and when I do it um, and I plan to paint that in a similar way to how I've done this but nine banded armadillos look completely different so it should be nice though to have them as a pair at the end this model ended up being so realistic that when I put it down like this, it gets up and walks away. It's really weird. Um, obviously, just kidding. This is my real armadillo Herbie. This is what I kind of loosely based it on. And I just thought, now I've finished the model, I'll um, let him have a look at it and see what he thinks. And I don't know if he's particularly fussed by it, but he had a little sniff around. And he seems to like it, I think. These three banded armadillos are just like... They're my favourite animal on the whole planet. They can completely curl it into a ball. And they just, yeah, this is me holding him sideways on. So you can get a similar kind of position to the one that I've made. Here he is giving the other one's head a sniff. Um, yeah, they're, they're just absolutely fantastic creatures. And I had real fun making this. Like, it was a really complicated sculpt. And it did end up taking a lot longer than I thought it would. But uh, I think it was worth it in the end, as often things are if you spend a bit more time on them. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, hit subscribe to see more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next video.